So in this series of three videos, we'll talk about the structure and a little bit of the function of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates can be produced in photosynthetic organisms from inorganic molecules, carbon dioxide and water. And for heterotrophs, they can acquire carbohydrates from photosynthetic organisms or produce from organic molecules uh, some of these carbohydrates. So carbohydrate exists as monosaccharides, single sugar units that are used as fuel molecules, but also as metabolic intermediates with a large variety of functions. They also exist as complex polymers, called also polysaccharides or complex carbohydrates. And these are used for energy storage in all organisms and for structural function in plants. The goal of this video will be to describe the structure and chemical and physical properties of monosaccharides. In general, monosaccharides are described as linear structure, in fact, unbranched linear structure, that contain between three and six carbons. They also contain a carbonyl group and several alcohol functions. When the carbonyl group is at the end of the molecule, it becomes an aldehyde, and the monosaccharide is called an aldose. And usually, the name of this monosaccharide ends in O's, for example, glucose. When the carbonyl group is anywhere else in the molecule, we have a ketone group. The sugar is called a ketose. And in all natural sugar, the ketone group is carried by carbon-2. In this case, usually the name of the sugar ends by eulose, for example, ribulose. So triose and tetrose are two types of monosaccharides that contain three and four carbon respectively. They are metabolic intermediates and are never found inside complex carbohydrates. In contrast, pantose that contain five carbon can be found in complex carbohydrates in plants. And in all organisms, they are also found in a very important type of molecule called nucleotides. For example, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, contain a molecule of ribose. Finally, hexose are important fuel molecules, in particular glucose. And they are found also in homo or heteropolymer. For example, glucose in plant is polymerized in form of starch. In animals, glucose polymerize in form of glycogen, even in coach potatoes. So now if we look at the structure of monosaccharides, we can identify a certain number of asymmetric carbons. That will lead to stereoisomers that are mirror images of each other, and they are called for that reason enantiomers. Let's, for example, take the simplest monosaccharide, glycerhaldehyde. It contains one asymmetric carbon and has two enantiomers. These enantiomers share a lot of chemical and physical properties. However, they differ in the way they affect polarized light. For example, we can take a light source and use a filter that will select only one plane of polarization. When this polarized light goes through a cell that contains our chiral sugar, the plane of the polarized light will rotate, and we can determine the direction of the rotation as well as the angle of rotation. If the rotation is clockwise, the sugar is said dextrorotatory and designated by a plus sign. If the rotation is counterclockwise, the sugar is said levorotatory and designated by the minus sign. There is also another nomenclature called the D and L series. And this nomenclature was established by Emil Fischer, the same person that came up with the uh, lock and key mechanism for enzymes. To understand this nomenclature, we need to follow several rules. First, we write the developed chemical structure of the monosaccharides 
vertically, placing the aldehyde or the ketone group toward the top. Then we can number our carbon starting from the top, in the case, for example, of galactose, from 1 to 6. We then identify the asymmetric carbon. And if the hydroxyl group carried by the bottom most asymmetric carbon is on the right, it will belong to the D series. And if it's on the left, the sugar will belong to the L series. Is there a relationship between the L and D nomenclature and the plus or minus designation? Not always. In fact, the L and D assignment by Fischer for glyceraldehyde was arbitrary. Fischer was lucky because D glyceraldehyde is dextrorotatory. But for example, L fructose is dextrorotatory. So the D and L series is a convention based on glyceraldehyde that does not take into account the actual optical properties of the molecule. Now, we can try to figure out the diversity of monosaccharide in living organisms. And we'll focus, for example, on the diversity of hexodes in nature. In fact, there is a limited number of hexodes that exist in cells. Most of them belong to the D series. If we start with glyceraldehyde, which has three carbons, and just add three carbons to create an exos, then we can see that we have, in fact, eight possibilities of D hexos. Out of these eight possibilities, we have only three extremely common hexos, which are D galactose, D glucose, and D mannose. So in conclusion, we've seen in this video that monosaccharides can be described as linear structure. However, in the next video, we learn that, in fact, it's not always the case.